and the end of the Lord appeared unto Joseph in a dream and told him of the birth of the things of the world. And then at the very end of the film, we are told that when Pilate sat upon his throne, his judgment seat, that his wife sent a messenger saying, have nothing to do with that righteous man. In his feet, we call the king. So the whole thing was to dream. Now, can I dream into being by the death of my own being? Dream the kind of world that I want? I can. That's the story. He's telling it all, and he is not the first from his dream. I am his emanation. I am his bride. Until the dream is at an end. He becomes one with his emanation at the very end of the dream. As tells us in scripture. He leaves all and cleaves to his wife until they become one person. But I am his emanation. His wife until this wonderful sleep is over. Until it's over, I think the twelve is projection, is emanation. And here's this thing called man. But well, how can I, in some way, take the same technique and dream in my world of Caesar, as he has determined to dream me into his own being and become one with him? I recall that in 1948, my father heard it for the first time. I started lecturing in 1938, and he heard me for the first time. And after that lecture that morning, we all came home to have brunch, and he said, you know, my son, everything you said this morning, I will be with it. All but one. You told the people to close their eyes when they meditate, when they begin to assume and to visualize objectives. Just. Don't close the eye completely. If you close the eye exactly, that came to a night dream. And this is a day dream. The day dream, you must have the eye a jaw, but not shut. Just pass the glass. But I could not deny my father's suggestion, not because it was my father, but here was a man who started behind the eight ball in life. No education, no social background, no intellectual background, but nothing, I mean, behind the eight ball, in the true sense of the word. And when he died at the age of 85, he could leave a fortune to his ten children. He raised ten children. I never once inherited one nickel from anyone and could at the end of his 85 years leave to his ten children a considerable fortune running into multiple millions. And every day my father would sit in the silence with his eyes partly shut. And he would look and see what he wanted to do. He was controlled by not closing the eye. As he said, if you close the eye, you're drifting right into an ice where your attention is not controlled by you it controls you. And you go right into an ice cream. If you don't close the eye, you can see what you want to see. And the whole thing comes come to pass in this world. Everything as you see it. So tell your people the next time not to close the eye. By the simply bring it into a partial closing state, a jar. And bring before your mind's eye while the eye is not completely shut, 
exactly what you want to see. Carry on all the conversations that would inspire the fulfillment of your desire. I do it in that way. <coughs> and here was a man who was talking to me, who died at the age of 85, but long before he died, he had made his fortune. And I don't really believe my father ever did the dishonest thing in this world. I really do not believe he ever did. I really believe, it's my deep conviction about my father. Why I don't know, I think all of us, the ten of us, feel this way about him. He met my, my mother when she was about three years old and he was about eight. It was a romance with a matter of eight and three. And then, when she was eighteen, and they got married, and he said to my little niece, so we did a fabulous party for you today. Champagne is flowing like a river. Everything. When I married your grandmother, I could still afford a half pint of rum. And so we had a half pint of rum to celebrate the union, this wonderful wedding. But he went on with this simply partly closing the eye and controlling his attention and seeing what he wanted to see. And he called it the daydream. The daydream does not differ from the night dream. Say so that in the daydream you are in control, or you ought to be in control. In the night dream, it takes over. 